and we are back live in effect man um my co-host was my bro yes, damo yes. rose the dab and damo show and then yep it's not every day we get the og in here wilson tarpe <laughs> you know so it's good to see you man this is on the hardest men working in dc so Facts. it's glad you could spend a little bit of time with us it's been a lot of crazy um things going on in sports world before we get into that i just want to say all-star weekend was amazing it like was. the the kid in me man i've always wanted to go to a uh the all-star weekend festivities oh like you I, went yeah i was at the home run derby oh man oh man it was crazy it was to see harper do what he did and how he that, did it i know that atmosphere was sick oh it was incredible i will say harper in true dc fashion played like the ultimate dc athlete Why and what i that? mean by that is he played to the level of his competition mm -hmm. because in the first two rounds he was weak it wasn't <laughs> like he was weak in a bad way like okay freddie freeman he mm -hmm. had nine home runs, right? So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, Bryce going to knock him out in, like, two minutes. Mm -hmm. It's like three minutes. It's like, Bryce, come on, bro. What you doing, bro? We, we need these. You can't lose in the first round, especially <laughs> to your division rival. Right. You'll never hit the end of it. Mm -hmm. So it was like, all right. In the second round, I think dude hit, like, 15. So it was like, okay, Bryce going to knock him out. And Bryce starts slow, and then he got going. So mm -hmm. when uh, Kyle Schwarber from the Cubs, when he hit, I thought he was going to hit, like, 20, 25, because the way he was going. Sheesh. Um, in the first two rounds, when I tell you he was knocking them suckers out. And I missed it. Out, I'm mad I missed it. I seen the highlights in the, in the bro, clips on YouTube, though. That guy, when I saw him hit, I was like, Bryce has a problem mm -hmm. because he he's going to win. Like, to me, I thought he was going to win. Right. And he hit 18 instead of 20. So I'm like, okay, all right, Bryce can gauge it. So in the final round, you know, he had two, he had two timeouts. It's four minutes to hit as many home runs as possible. Mm -hmm. The first timeout's 45 seconds. The second timeout's 30. Mm hmm so when Bryce called the first time out, which was like at 2.45, mm -hmm. he only had four home runs. And I'm like, Bryce, what are you what doing? You gotta turn up. Now, now, some of it wasn't his fault. I would say his dad was throwing some horrible pitches. That's mm -hmm. just me. Maybe he was nervous <laughs> in the moment. Cause I Could mean, be. You, you, wanna just, city. you wanna throw in the strike zone. My man was throwing in the dirt. Mm -hmm. He was throwing behind him. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, we got time on our hands. Second time out, he only had nine home runs. Mm -hmm. It's like a minute 30, so I'm like, Okay, Bryce going to have to get going. Mm -hmm. And then he even said post game, he was like, I kind of looked at the crowd, looked at my mom. She was shaking her head. It was like, all right, I, bet. I got Let it. Let me stop playing. And it's just like 10, <laughs> 11, 12, 13. I'm like, he's just knocking these suckers out. Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't trying to record any home runs. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to jinx anything. Mm -hmm. But once he tied it and he had the extra 30 seconds, I was like, all right, I'm recording. Right, I know he's, he's going he to hit it. And he hit it, and the crowd just went crazy. No, they did. Um, I was sitting a, a, behind a whole bunch of uh, Yankee fans. They was like, "Don't worry, Bryce oh, coming man. to New York next year. You already know, Yankees." We back. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> hopefully that'll promote, help him think about staying in DC. I mean, yeah, for him to win that it, love. that that was a huge moment, really, for the city, for the franchise. Mm -hmm. You could argue that's, that's that might be that, the best. That moment. seems like that'll be a moment that'll be played when he retires. That'll be a yeah. To, to win how he won in mm -hmm. DC, because mm -hmm. I don't think he's doing it again. Like that, that might be it for right. him. So that it was because he didn't do it last year. I remember they said he's gonna wait until it. Yeah, comes I mean to DC. after the first time he did it in 2013, he mm -hmm. was like, yo, because then the next year they announced that in 2018 we were getting it. Mm -hmm. So it was like I'm not doing it again until we get it. Because remember last year they wanted him and Aaron Judge. Ah, uh, they wanted that, and Bryce was just like, judge. nah, like that's that's not happening. So it was one of them things like, all right, we'll, we'll see what's good from there. So mm -hmm. I just had to say that was crazy. Um, the Fan Fest down at the convention center was mm -hmm. just like super wild. Um, it was just a lot of fun. Like if you're a baseball fan, right. you definitely would have enjoyed it. So that whole weekend, that whole week was was, 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 cool. was wild. Just to see the celebs in town. Like mm -hmm. we we as a city need that. And I seen had, a clip where Shaq had over on a red skin yeah, shirt. Yeah, that, that was dope. Because he, <laughs> he was at um, Echo Stage. He mm -hmm. did a rave. So imagine Shaq at he was he was DJing one of the games as well. Yeah, and it was like he was dope. So mm -hmm. nah, salute salute to Shaq and all that. But it it was dope. So I had to just preface it with this. Mm -hmm. But since we got that out the way, man, yo, Kawhi is going to the six. Mm -hmm. He's going to Toronto. Mm -hmm. What's your what's your take on it? Like let, let's get Damo's reaction. Then we're gonna mm -hmm. get Wilson in here and talk about it as well. I mean, I don't think Kawhi is going to stay there. Oh no, the entire time. I don't really think that, but. Some, they had to do something, and I, I believe that was the best offer they got. Now, Kawhi, I love that move for the Spurs because they got a, they got DeRozan. You know, DeRozan offensively is a beast. Now, Kawhi's a beast offensively and defensive, defensive, defensively as well, but 
the Rosa makes his living on that offensive and you know mid range jumpers. He's a ball movement like he he fits well in a Spurs system I I believe because he doesn't he can come off the screen he can come he can, he can play off ball and then when they need a bucket that's an automatic bucket getter in the right system then he's never had a forward or a big man like Aldridge then you've got the the uh, the young point guard. What's his, what's his name? Dejounte Murray. Yeah. And they have mm -hmm. Lonnie Walker. Lonnie and they Walker's have, going to be a problem. Yes, they have a lot of pieces. I believe Bellinelli went back there or something like that. Yep. They have a lot of pieces. So I'm and a healthy Rudy Gay. Yeah. So I, I like that move. And one thing I I like, um, if you study like Tony Parker's game, Tony Parker's game is based on mid range. Whether it's the floater, whether mm -hmm. it's the little like you know, twelve foot All shot. The intricacies. That's that's Demar Derozan. Yeah. And then you get a prime Demar Derozan, who's more athletic than Tony Parker. Six seven. Yeah, like he can do more. So to get him at where he he is in his career, oh, Pop's gonna do wonders. He's yeah, gonna he do is. wonders with him. And then if you look at you know what's going on in Toronto, that's not a bad look either. Not at all. As long as Kawhi wants to play, like if he doesn't sit out. They're going to be a top three team in the East, easy. Mm -hmm. um, you still got all the young pieces there, so they get to grow and progress in their roles, mm -hmm. and they could either go for the title now, or if Kawhi leaves, mm -hmm. you got two. You're going to get rid of his contract. Mm -hmm. You already got rid of DeRozan's contract. And two years later, they get hit. the um, Lowry's contract is off the books. I mean, even if Lowry, they could get rid of him after this season. If not, they could still bring people yeah. to come to Toronto. Mm -hmm. So you got options. Uh, I think it's a win-win for both sides. It was just interesting. Like I knew he wasn't going to LA because Pop's not an mm -hmm. idiot. No, and you're not gonna get what you want. But Toronto, just to see that Woj bomb, you know, Wednesday morning, I was like, mm -hmm. Toronto, and you know the jokes on Twitter. That's that's all we live for. So I, then, I was enjoying it. But then nah, LA was, was pretty cool. smart not to give up all those pieces that. Yeah, the no media one's stupid. There's no way having to give up. They were gonna give all that for Kawhi. They mm -hmm. were just like, we'll risk it. We'll do what we did for Paul George. Now, if he stays, and a he stays. Mm -hmm. So it, it is what it is. Um. Nah, I think it's, it definitely shakes up the East because, you know, they say the East isn't competitive. Now you put Kawhi, who, when healthy and when he wants to play, mm -hmm. he could arguably be the best player in the entire Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. So to put him in Toronto, who had their best season ever, it's like, okay, you got if, – if we did, like, a top tier, to me the first tier would be Toronto, Boston, and, and Philly. Oh, I'm not putting Toronto up there yet. Nah. I got to see. Last time I've seen – we seen Kawhi play. He wasn't Kawhi. He didn't I mean, look as still, just the addition of Hopefully, that. I, I mean, I would, he was coming off an injury, I would though, put a little overweight. There, but. And then the second tier, I will put the Wizards, I'll put the Pacers, and mm. then and the Bucks, and then the third tier is everyone else. Mm, I don't think Kawhi boosts them. This is my, but I don't think he boosts them that much. They have to prove it. Wilson, what do you think? They definitely have to prove it. I mean, I'm kind of on board with both of y'all. I feel like both teams, it was a win for both teams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Pop's too old to be rebuilding. Damo said we're getting DeMar, you know, his prime. Yeah, yep. One of the better twos in the league. Um, Absolutely. I think it's going to be tough for Western Conference guards to deal with the way he plays because most, mm -hmm. you know, most most twos in the West, everybody just shoots the three ball. Yep, it's going to be tough, you know, outside of, like, I think Clay will be fired because he's a defensive-minded two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't really think of another two. Not Harden. Yeah, that's going to Hard is getting cooked. You know what I'm saying? You got to yeah. think about who's going to be able to slow him down in that position. That's going to be tough. Um, Like you said with the healthy Rudy. Um, secondly, with Pop, you have a chip on your shoulder because you wanted to f finish your career in Toronto. It didn't work out. Um, I came at him fast, man. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, my whole thing is I don't know why anybody's surprised. Like, they f they got rid of the coach of the year last year. They did. Like, that like, was surprising. If we go yeah. back, and I don't mean to, I don't want to be a jerk, but just it's a results business, right? Mm -hmm. um, last year, who was the only team in the Eastern Conference that got swept as the Cavs went to the finals? Toronto. Toronto. Two, three years straight, got swept by the same team. All right, and they were the only ones last year. You had baby teams, incomplete yeah. teams. Yeah. Take that same team that gave this team to Brown seven the games. seven games, right. You're right. With babies. Mm -hmm. But you were the number one seed. You had arguably the best bench in the Eastern Conference. Definitely. You felt like you were, you know, people look at your roster on paper, felt like y'all were there. His sportsman has got a role. Uh, kudos to Masai for doing what he had to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the part that's going to hurt is if he did, in fact, lie to DeMar. Um, it's going to be hard when, you know, you gave yourself financial flexibility to get the trust of a free agent. Yep. Yeah. Because, you know, that you're going to have to explain that part of it. Um, but, I mean, they only gave up Jacob Potal. They kept OG, which is love. Yes. Um, they kept Van Vliet, you kept which Van is Vliet. love. You kept Daylon Wright. You kept Pascal Siakam. 
Um, you know, they kept like their bench was really good last year. They finished a lot of games. Definitely so, was. Um, kudos to them for that. And like you guys both said, they get to play. You know, you might possibly have two max slots in the 2019-2020 free agent markets. And I'm probably of the small minority mm-hmm. that thinks uh, he might stay there. Oh. Only reason being because we've heard people talk crazy about Toronto until they play there. Mm-hmm. Then when they play there, their tune's like different. I don't want to leave. Yeah, and right. Everybody's, the atmosphere is yeah, crazy. And everybody keeps feeding that whole, oh, he doesn't like cold. DeMar didn't know what cold was before he got there. Mm-hmm. Hey, he's a Kali kid. Yeah, and look how he's dealing with leaving. But then some people say, you know, DeMar was the only superstar that actually wanted to stay in Toronto. And they that's say not Bosch wanted to leave, McGrady, I mean, Vince. I mean, that may be true or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't really care about all that. Like, no Vince to, to, to Mar, he wasn't on Vince's level. Mm-mm. So I don't really care. I don't even yeah, I don't really like want to partake I, in that conversation. Like when I saw uh, like, some players was like, yo, DeMar deserves a statue. Yeah, I, I was, was like, if Vince <laughs> doesn't get a statue, DeMar definitely doesn't deserve At it. all. Look, man, no disrespect, <laughs> bro. Like, y'all got punked by the same team for like four years. Literally. Ain't no statues, okay? Like, we're we not doing that. So. Uh, but, yeah, I think it, it worked best for both groups. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Toronto's not done. Yeah, they could move Kawhi. They could be. No, they need to move no, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. he he needs to go. Yeah, he, mm-hmm. that that's just me. Uh, that's my little. But I'll I'll get on that another day. Or mm-hmm. when that <laughs> actually arises, we'll we'll get on that. Um, speaking of basketball, you know, L. A. is is having an interesting time dealing with uh, LeBron's arrival. Some people are mm-hmm. all for it. Some are Laker Nation, Kobe stands. There aren't. And it's, Laker fans. Kobe stands, but Laker fans. Laker fans. <laughs> <laughs> I went down on Laker yeah, fans. I mean, Laker not fans. not all, but people anyway. like people love to throw salt Kobe name whenever they can. I mean, just accept no, it. No, I'm. He's right. the king of L.A. Tupac Kobe, Magic Johnson. That's just facts. I'm I'm gonna chill. Just like uh, when you come to D.C., <laughs> the king of D.C., Dom Rowe. I'm just oh. saying, just facts, you know. And my good man Jimmy Black, shout out him. All right, you know, I'm going to let that soliloquy no. rock. You know, I'm, I'm not going to hit me, I will drop 18 <laughs> points per game off the bench if you need me. In your dreams, right? But anyway, uh, <laughs> so you, you had this mural that was created that, that looked amazing. And, you know, haters want to hate. So they wrote three and six. He's not the king. He's not the And they, they – I love that part of the mural. They destroy the, the mural <laughs> or – the guy, uh, he paints over it. Instead, he paints what like the Sports Illustrated cover looked like. Mm-hmm. So, do you like this mural over the original, uh-huh. or do you like the original better? Like, what do you feel about this mural? This new mural is greatness at its finest. Cause you have you have Kobe with the with the championship trophy, and he just cool and like in that picture, like he just cool looking, exhausted. You know, three Pete. <coughs> um, then you have. Shaq. Then you have Shaq beside him. <laughs> then you have Magic. Then you got the Kareem. My, Kareem. Then you have one of my favorite players of all time, very underrated, Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain. The main reason I love it is because you have Kobe. He's kind of looking down at Braun, and Braun's looking up at him, you know. But no, on a serious note, that first one it was kind of just the king of L.A. and it was just him by himself, and he hasn't played a a, a game in L.A. That kind of set it all because L.A. is not like D.C. or Philadelphia, they're used to winning championships. They have, what, 16 championships? Yeah, championship that comes with us. a different type of aura, a different type of vibe, a different type of pride. Main key word, pride. So I love this new mural. It shows, it shows respect because when you go to people's towns, like you go to Houston or D.C. or Cali, you have to some, – sometimes you have to check in. Sometimes you have to show respect to certain people. And so I like that. So you have to humble yourself when you go to other people's territory that you're not used to. So I mean, to me, to I, I thought I think both murals are dope. Um, I saw Cardell. He made a Facebook post. He was like, "I like the mural. I wish they would have added, you know, George Mikan and, and Jerry West. Like, if you're really gonna keep it, Laker greats and mm-hmm. add Elgin Baylor, like all well, of then them. Then you're gonna have to add. You're gonna have to add a lot of people. Nah, like, those three would have did it. If you would have added Mike and the first great Lakers superstar and the, really the first NBA star, then you add Jerry West and Baylor. The that, logo. That, that would that would pretty much do it. Like, mm-hmm. uh, no disrespect, Worthy doesn't need to be there. Um, Byron Scott doesn't need to be there. Ori doesn't need to be there. Like the those three would have covered it. I mean, all of them looking down because you see evolution from George Mike and when they were the Minneapolis Lakers mm-hmm. to Magic to. To Shaq, Kobe, mm-hmm. and all of that, so I, I thought it was cool. Uh, it's, it's more like a, you know, like the OG checking, like you said, is like uh, we see you, like you want to be on this mural one day, mm-hmm. like you gotta win one. Mm-hmm. All, all LeBron needs to do is win one. He wins one, one, 
Yeah, if he wins one, to me, I feel like I think he Lakers, needs to win at least two. He's three. not winning two. LA's a, a town where winning matters. No, one out he, of four years, one out it, of five years. One given the roster four, that this they're currently, I think one suffices. That's that's just me. Not I a don't, bad roster. Not a bad roster. That's not a championship winning roster. Who? Well, why not? Why can't it be? You Taking Golden these? State out of the equation, they're young, have a lot of talent. They have more talent than the Wizards do on that roster. That's because LeBron's there. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Without LeBron, they're pretty talented, very talented. And they're misguided, which means they would be going to yeah. anywhere. That's so. where LeBron comes in at battle tested. He so you show them young puppies. LeBron is the one player they need to get to the NBA Finals. Nah, no, nah, but veteran leadership is real. I'm not saying it's not, but they got they got ways to go. Like they're going yeah. to grow in this. To me, the first year, I'm not gonna say it doesn't count, but if LeBron were to if they win the first round, the playoffs, and they lose second round, like that's my expectations for them. Ooh. At best, second round, I don't, I don't see them going far. And them young pups, as the season go along, they gonna get better. This, my, my, one of my favorite Redskins, Fred Smooth, he said this on his podcast. Never, he said when you, when, when police, they buy these canine dogs, they don't just release, release them out to the wild or release them out to work. They train them first. They get it, to, they get them together, and then a couple months down the line, when they ready to attack, they are ready to do their work. It's game time. If we do a top five Redskins list and Fred Smooth is on your is in your list, <laughs> you gotta leave. I'm just I'm just letting Fred you know. Fred Smooth, so, that's my guy. I like I love Fred. I, I, Smooth. I'm being I, I, I'm cool with Fred too, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm gonna have to leave if you say Fred <laughs> the top five Redskins. Do you <laughs> like? Hey, I mean, hey, don't sleep off on Fred Smooth, man. I got a lot of love for Fred Smooth. Fred Smith. Smith. Fred Smooth is not a top five. Redskin, anything. Let's that's that's be real. I, I love him as a personality. Like You're right, Adam Archuleta is my number one. That was a joke. You knew. You. That was a joke. That was a joke. I'm, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to go to this next topic. That's, that's what we need to do. Jesse oh. Armstead. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> Patrick Ramsey. Switching to football, <laughs> you know, more appropriate football talk. I, Wilson, do you want to chime in or we going to go to the next? Mark Brunel. Chime in on what? Ramsey's list. What's the mural thing? Oh, the mural thing. Um, we'll, we'll get to the Redskins list maybe um, later, depending <laughs> on if we have enough time. Cause I mean, personally, the mural thing, it just doesn't matter to me. Um, people doing a whole lot of overreacting about nothing. The Lakers one of the most uh, story franchises in the NBA. Uh, you got to win a couple chips, at least three, for me to even consider this whole, you know, one of the greatest Lakers ever thing. Because mm-hmm. people getting just way too crazy. Put them over Kobe, yeah, just, like people like that. Just... Look, he's here. He's the best player in the league right now. Yeah. And that's cool. No problem Absolutely. with that. Um, if you want to call him by his nickname, cool. That's cool, too. I'm not going to judge anybody for it. Mm-hmm. Won't be me. Um, but, nah, he ain't doing nothing yet. And until, like, I need people to wake up and remember, this is Golden State's league until proven otherwise. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, no disrespect to people going to a new place. It's a cool story, all that other stuff. I don't care. Yeah, like, it means like, like, I'm just saying, I hate to be that person, but who, who, who's, who's the favorite for next year? Golden State. State. Who's the favorite for the year after that? Golden State. State. Who's, who's, who might still be the favorite the year after that? The Washington Wizards. All right, cool. We, we might. But that's what I'm saying. At least right now, like, <laughs> we know whose world we living in. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of like this is just too much to me. Like, let them earn it or whatever. And it's cool. Like, you just came off a series where they swept you. Mm. I don't want to hear about none of this. If this was somebody else, would we be talking bad, about sweet. it? Uh, no, I'm just, just to be completely honest. If Katie were to go to the Lakers, I think we would be talking about it. Nah, but Katie didn't just get swept. No, I mean, you're I'm just right. saying, period. If somebody else got swept and came, went to somewhere else, will we be making a big story about it? No, mm-hmm. they probably wouldn't get a mural right, made cool. either. I just, nope. That's why I don't really care. Like, it's going to State's world, put some respect on their name, and until somebody knocks them off otherwise. That's the only mural I want to see. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, switching sports, you know, NFL, um, one of the best running backs, maybe the best running back in the game of football, um, Le'Veon Bell, his contract. He's been going at it with the Steelers organization the past few years about, you know, the stipulations with his contract, and they've been franchise tagging him. And once again, they haven't been able to come to a deal. Mm-hmm. So my thing is, he's saying it's pretty much this is going to be his best year yet, but it's probably going to be his last year in a Steelers, in a Steelers uniform. What do you feel about the business aspect of what they're doing, and do you think he deserves more? And if you do, how much do you think he deserves? Uh, I think he deserves more. That's, that's why the um, NFL players they're looking at the NBA contracts like, wow, because it's all guaranteed in, the, in in the NBA and Major League Baseball, mm-hmm. NFL. They and and the NFL, they, they don't get nothing. Exactly, they're really putting their bodies and livelihoods on the line. Speak and on it, Le'Veon Bell. He's a running back, but he's he's a receiver. He's a great blocker, and you know, 
like like the fella said on the uh, show on Tuesday, you know, they, you can only blame their um their association, the players' association, because they had a deal. What last year they could have improved on it or put some of these stipulations in it, or the year before, I believe. So maybe on deserves that money, and if they don't want to pay him the money, see, and and also this franchise tag, I don't like the franchise tag. Maybe it, I would have been less stressed out if we didn't keep franchise tagging this quarterback that I will not name anymore. The only one that's getting the only fully guaranteed contract in the history of the NFL. You yeah, that, that guy. That guy. Making $84 million over three years. Yeah. Something him. that Le'Veon should probably be getting. And, Who's still talking about the Redskins has it in his mouth. I mean, that's 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 it is what it is. He's but, a hater. But, yeah, <laughs> Le'Veon deserves his money. Pay the man. No, I, I'm with paying the player because <laughs> you don't have – that window of greatness that you have doesn't last long. At so all. you need to get your money while you can. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you can argue, I mean, championships aside, like other than maybe Franco, if you just take away the championships, like Le'Veon to me is still as great as running back. Oh, over Bettis already? If we're just talking like championships aside, just look at skill set, uh, there, there hasn't been a Le'Veon that still is. Or there hasn't been an Antonio Brown that still is organization. Like Antonio to me, championships aside, that's you not look, fair. It is fair. Just right. look look at how he plays compared to Lynn. And granted, Les game Swan is different. And then he was Star Wars. They were they were crazy, crazy. Championships crazy. aside, look I mean, at Antonio Brown and tell me that they're better. You're lying. You can do that. I mean, no, cha- they're not. I mean, your skills is Hines Ward better. Is Hines Ward better than Antonio Brown? I wouldn't take Hines Ward over Antonio Brown. He got Super Bowls. He got MVP. Super Bowl. But MVP. you said Lin Swan and Stallworth. Those are different type of dudes. They're they're legends. I'm just saying they're not Antonio Brown. Like, and I yeah. feel like with Le'Veon, you gotta you have a a top running back, maybe the top running back, depending on who you ask. In the league, yeah, and, 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 and the fact that you're gonna have him go by the wayside because of money. Come on, bro. You better than that. But I blame this. Well, I'm not gonna blame it on the Shanahan system. But what the 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 the, the league they find they see that you know these running backs they can be uh what's the word I'm looking for? What replace? Re- re- con- I wouldn't say Spendable. replaceable. Dispendable. That's the word I'm looking for because you know it's all about the systems and and it's all you about see the how system. This is the run in Pittsburgh. Like they need someone who can they, run, they do. catch, block. He's about tw- he's about to be what 29. He's 28. About to be 29. Yeah. Running backs, they they say they last till about 30, 31. Me and DeMarco Murray just retired, and he's 30. Mm-hmm. And Reeves just retired, and he's, what, 31. But, mm-hmm. I mean, nah, someone gifted like Le'Veon, you, you got to pay that brother. Yeah. Pay him, pay him while you can, because once he gone, he gone. Yeah. And he going to ball out somewhere else. You want to say anything, Wilson, or? No, it's just another example of the NFL, uh, NFL Players Association being way behind. Uh, way, way. Association in the other leagues. Um, you know, Cardell made a good re point on Tuesday talking about they had a chance, you know, when the Collins stuff happened, for everybody to get together, stand together, you know, possibly strike or figure something out. They failed on their opportunity. You probably not gonna get op- another opportunity to fix it. And so um, when is the uh, CBA expired? Do you know? Isn't it like a yeah, few years? They probably do the same thing, get another bad deal. They never on the same page. It's cause like right now you got you don't even gotta be a good quarterback and you get dumb money right now. Le'Veon's earned every like Somebody owes him money, and you know he'll get it in on the free agent market next year. Like that's why it's horrible that they got to tag the fact that you could tag somebody twice. It's crazy. Good thing is they can't do it a third time. So you know, good for him. No, I'm with you. All right, and, and Damo, he he has a topic. You know, he wanted to do top five. You know, since top five, it's, top five, since top it's five. the summertime, you you can do uh you know evergreen type topic. So he wanted to do this top five Redskins, top that five Wizards. Evergreen means you can do it all year. Oh. That, that's evergreen. I'm trying try to school you up, man. You know? SAT word. Get, <laughs> get it. Um, Just an industry word, really. Good. Learn something new every day. Yeah, absolutely. As, as, as you, as you <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, I'm a, since you, you brought the topic up, what do you want to do, Redskins? Or what's, well, we're talking football. Let's do Redskins, your top five. Again, if Red Smooth is in your top five, I'm going <laughs> out and go on. <laughs> and this is just off the top of the head. I didn't write this down or anything, so. This is going to be true. So, number five, I'm going to go with Champ. I love Champ. When I was younger, Champ was my – now, we're going to – I'm talking favorite. I'm not talking best or – Oh, okay. I'm about to be like, because, you know, Champ didn't do enough here for him he didn't. to, to he be did. top five. He but didn't, okay. but actually – No, I mean, it's your top five. Go, go no, for it. It is. It is. It's, it's yours. The actually, no. Yours, man. I'm going to go with Art Monk. Captain Planet. <laughs> top five. One of my favorite cartoons. 
You said top Art Monk. Art Monk number five. Okay. Because he was a quiet assassin. He just went about his job, and he his numbers when he retired, he was after Jerry Rice and almost every wide receiver statistically statistically wise. So Art Monk, and I also went to his football camp when I was young and met him. So. That was a big that was a big thing for me to see. So yeah, before Jay broke the records, he was number mm-hmm. one in everything. Yep. So Art Monk, number four. Sage Rosen, it's like nah, um number four, I'm gonna go with Clinton Portis. Now he should be higher than that probably, but I'm gonna go with Clinton Portis. That's my favorite Redskins running back of all time. C P he was just that guy from the dress he used to dress up during the after the games, you know, rushing wise, he was he was blocking. I remember seeing him play in Denver, and he had a championship belt after he broke some record. The rushing, nah, he had five touchdowns in that game. I it remember was that crazy. Game the belt. He was crazy. Very underrated player. Very very underrated player. Number three. Mm. Do, 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 do. Number three. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. Can we – now, I don't want to – I'm going to go with RG3, number three. Rookie season. Rookie season, RG3. I'm not saying his overall, but that – as a Redskin fan, born after 90 after 91 Super Bowl, that was the most excitement I no, probably I, I, ever had. I say that every time our 2012 gets brought up, it's the greatest year of my life. The greatest. Like, yeah, I've so never – But I'm not putting them top five. That's, I mean, that's your, that's your list. Favorite? At 2000, I'm going to say 2012 RG3. That, that's your list, so go, 2012 go ahead. 2012 RG3. And this is what I was thinking. If I go back and think, he probably won't even be in my tops. Go, go ahead. This but is 2012 RG3, man, that, that zone read was something new. You know, he had Alfred Morris looking like a god out there, looking like baby Jamal Lewis. Man, 2012 RG3. <laughs> your metaphors are funny. Um, Appreciate it. Number yeah. two, I'm going to go with, hmm. I'm gonna go with D'Angelo Hall, and this is in my this is in my lifetime. So D'Angelo Hall, that's I used to get in arguments in high school about D'Angelo Hall. If y'all know how I argue, it used to get real on the buses and the lunch tables. You know, I I, I could only imagine going to school with you. <laughs> D'Angelo <laughs> Hall was that guy. People used to hate uh, on D. Hall so much, but he was a corner. He was a lockdown corner when he needed to be for a long time for us. And people may laugh when I say that, but he was one of my favorite corners. No, you know, I, Pro Bowls. I, I rock with D. Hall. D. Hall. And number one, of course, Sean Taylor, the GOAT. Nothing really has to be said there. One of my favorite players of all, if not my favorite Redskin NFL player, maybe sports player of all time. You know, I had, back when I had a MySpace, all my passwords had something to do with Sean Taylor. And, you know, my Facebook passwords and everything. Sean, I had a Sean Taylor jersey. I used to. You know, Sean Taylor had his little dance. He used to do this. I used to do that in the backyard while I, while I was smacking heads, you know, in my prime. <laughs> Putting people down. But, but I thought you said you could play in the NBA. So I is, do it all. Is, I'm is versatile. Is this your prime or is then your prime? I'm still in my prime. I've been in my prime since I was like 12. <laughs> since I was like 12. So, uh, you know, is, yeah, I got right. till I'm like 35. So, red skins, you know. I can learn how to play baseball. I don't know how to play, but <laughs> Nats, you need a baseball player. So to hit that's me. your top five. Yeah, and that's a that's a rough draft, honestly. That's, that's a rough draft. That's a rough um, draft. I'm gonna do top five. I'm not gonna do any order. Um, <sighs> mine's is gonna be. Smart man. Mine's is gonna be more like I'm I'm a risk and historian in this, so I'm gonna do all the players. Um, first person I'm gonna mention, I'm gonna mention Sammy Ball. Sammy oh, Ball slinger Sammy. Be, um, I remember seeing the uh, top 100 all time, and Bill Belichick was like, he was Peyton Manning, Ed Reed, and Ray Guy all in one person. And mm-hmm. I was just like, yeah, like the the things he could do and how he was able to do it. Um, slinging Sammy definitely deserves to be top five. Dale Green, the Iron Man. How did I not put him? In he there? definitely deserves to be top five. Um, his post is still in my room. I have three posters. I have a Kyle Ripken mm-hmm. uh, plaque. I have a Dale Green poster. I used to have like three Dale Green posters. And then I have a Jordan, uh, like 98 Bulls poster. So those are three. That's been in my room my whole life. So definitely. You uh, small. You like Steph Curry or football. I mean, you could say that. Little Fastest man, man in, in the league consistently. 20 years. Ran a 4-2 age, 40. 40. You know, 4-5 four, five, four, five at 50, you know. That's sick. That's that's legendary. So definitely he's in there. Um Sean Taylor, without a doubt, his impact on the league today is, is still evident in terms of he's like that first, like, breaking the mold type free safety. And, and honestly, we haven't had a great free safety since. You know, um, 
of what his spirit means to the city, this area, to the University of Miami, um, mm -hmm. South Florida players. It's everything. And even, you know, with Cam Chancellor finally retiring, he said every game, mm -hmm. for every game you watch, I'll take the highlight. So definitely um, that's that's my number three. Or who else? Um, John Riggins. You gotta put uh, mm. Riggins. You gotta put Rigo. See, you going back? I said my lifetime. I should have did what you did. No, I, I, I mean, that's, I, that's all I do is, is watch Redskins stuff. So I, I would definitely put Riggins, uh, mm -hmm. MVP, one of our first Super Bowl, uh, one of the original uh, touch, Russian touchdown holders mm -hmm. records. Um, he was the guy, you know. Uh, so definitely, yeah, I put Rigo, and then if I had to do someone else to round off top five. Again, it's in no order. You can flip them any way you want. Mm -hmm. You said Art Monk, and I, I'm going to roll with Art. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roll with Art Monk. Uh, again, when he retired, he had all the records. Mm -hmm. So why not? I remember I still had the 91 highlight tape in my room. Facts. And uh, and I used to watch that thing effortlessly. I was quoting all the guys, all the coaches, all that. So mm -hmm. definitely Art Monk. That's my man. But I do a personal favorite. I would say Santana. Like Santana. And I'm going to replace RG3 favorite. with Santana. I'm not going to take that 2012. Nah, I mean, yeah. you, that, that's your island. I'm going to let you be on and your honestly, own island. One of my favorite. My favorite is Brian Mitchell. I like, I love Brian Mitchell. Yeah, B. Mitchell Not just is for, dope. Yes, I love his. I love what he does now, but him playing, he was very underrated. He did the, the little things that people don't pay attention to. Should be in the Hall of Fame right now. You know, kick yeah, return, I mean, he was, he was, return, smack you know, He was heads. the guy before Devin Hester came on the scene and Tell did you. what he did. So, yep. no, I'm cool with B. Mitchell. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's just my five. Do you want to chime in, Wilson, out of the things you've seen since you've been here, or are you like, nope? <laughs> Y'all's team, I ain't messing with. Yeah, he was. He's Respect been spoiled. Me. He's been spoiled. He has. Oh, he's oh. been. He doesn't. He's, he's been spoiled right. with all his teams. Has, but I'm not. I'm not has, gonna go there with has. that. That's gonna be. He has easy. about three quarterbacks he can name. There's only two. 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 I was gonna say two. Yeah, like, two <laughs> it's not third. three. Nobody third. Yeah. yeah, no, I. I Somebody agree. gotta earn that before we even start talking that crazy. Yeah, no. That's a whole hey. lot to earn. I it mean, is. That's a lot to earn. Man, y'all are spoiled. Why we got? Hold on, like. Go back to y'all's next question. Maybe I'm just hating. Like, I feel like, yeah, I'm I feel just like that energy. <laughs> I'm not hating. I, I, I like, love watching, like, like Frisco uh, highlights and stuff. Hey, so. look, yeah. I, I know Frisco and most of teams ain't nothing on this show playing. Let me be because I don't like the energy. <laughs> <laughs> like, all his teams just win. Like, you can't even mess just with them win. when they lose. Nope. Nope. So, it's just like, yeah, y'all lost. Okay, we got some. Do you have anything? You're like, no. Nope. I don't. That's you cool. know, it, it, teams lose over the time. But we you can't mess with you Bowl. when they lose. I watched my team lose in the Super Bowl. If you've watched your team in a Super Bowl. I mean, I've, I've been alive for all of them. I was five months old when we were in the Super Bowl. Okay, no, if I wasn't that, alive. Two months old, actually. I, I apologize. I see what you're saying. I will be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm going to also mention top five Wizards. Do you do you want to go with that? or Because we got, we got a little bit of time left. Yeah, we got some time left. I'll just name. I'm, it's not going to be in the top five because I like what you did. So I'm going to just name my, my favorite Wizards, you know. Got Anton Jameson, you know, Mr. Mr. He was just different. The way he, he used to lay the ball up off the wrong foot all of the time. He's, his putbacks were very different. His whole game was just different, you know, but he can drop 40 on you in a second, 50 on you in a second, especially yeah, when Antoine he was, was Antoine was dope. Very dope. You know, I got we got Larry Hughes. I loved Larry Hughes' game because I had a Larry Hughes jersey. You know, he was, he was a two-guard, very long arms. He played the passing lanes. He played defense. He was always top two in uh, steals while he was playing. And, yeah. You know, so I loved Larry Hughes. Um, After he left us, he was trash. He was very trash. He was, <laughs> he was trash. Like, he was we caught, like, the good Larry Hughes. We did. The moment he left and went to Cleveland, mm -hmm. yeah, that's all she wrote. And we have, I'm going to put um, Jerry Stackhouse. Jerry Stackhouse, that's one of Jerry my Stackhouse top. Jerry Stackhouse is in your top? He I mean, is. Because yeah. at that time, you know, it was Jerry Stackhouse and Jordan. Yeah, and that was the time I, I Kobe and Shaq was doing their thing. So in DC, it was I got to see Jerry Stackhouse and Jordan play. And growing up, I loved I loved I his say game. The same you know? level, but all right. No, 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 no. But I'm saying, you know, I would be, if I wasn't a Wizards fan, I would be a Lakers fan because of Kobe. No, nah, I mean, yeah, Shaq and Kobe were but everything. I only, but I nah, only believe in one team. So you know, Stackhouse. I was growing. Up, I used to grow up. That's when my uh, the, the Hoyas had Michael Sweetney. So I would always go to a lot of their games. And I used to see Jerry Stackhouse. He had his free throw team. He used to go all the way to the ground with it and then come back up. And I used to mimic that outside. So, you know, I'm not going to say Jordan because, of course, Jordan is the Wizards Jordan. That was a part of my era growing up. One of the main reasons I started watching basketball. Um, next, I'm going to go Gilbert Arenas, Hibachi, Mr. Agent Zero. 
Yeah, he did Not, zero for ever. Nothing has to really be said about that. You know, missed the turnaround before the game when a shot goes in. Before Steph perfected it, Gilbert was yep. doing it first. I tell people that all yep. the time. Mr. Dagger. You know, I said he was the first James Harden. His, him and his, they two games kind of similar to I me. I saw that on Twitter not too long ago. I was like, right. I, I agree. Like, very streaky, was, very well, offensive. I'll, I'll get on my Gilbert soliloquy when I talk. But, yeah, no, definitely. Mm, and, of course, John Wall. You know, he's he's Mr. Right Now, Mr. DC Right Now. So, that's my that's my fabulous. All right. And Popeye um, Jones would be the same. <laughs> <laughs> Jihadi White. This guy. Uh, if, I had to, if I had to go, um, I'll, I'll do more current people. You you mm-hmm. pretty much mentioned a lot. I got mentioned Karan Butler. Got I to. remember when we let tough uh, juice. We met um, Larry Hughes leave, and then we got Karan. I was like, okay, how's it gonna work? And then with Karan, we were we were better. And I was like, man, very, this guy he, he great defensively, um, offensively. When we needed a bucket, we could go to him. Solid. He was always solid, well-rounded guy. Tough. He added great chemistry to the locker room mm-hmm. and all the things we needed. So I definitely rock with him. You mentioned Antoine. Antoine, like that, that our big three with Antoine, Karan, and and Gilbert was everything. So not nah, Antoine all, and then being a fan of Antoine before um, he got to the Wizards when he was with the Warriors and with the Mavericks, mm-hmm. it's funny we had a lot of most improved players. He had six man, he was six man of the year with Dallas, and then uh, Gilbert was most improved player with the Warriors. So it's mm-hmm. just kind of seeing we didn't necessarily get scrubs, but we got like kind of rejects right. or like retooled players, and then they came to us and they flourished well. Mm-hmm. You mentioned John Wall. I got to mention John Wall. Definitely. That's only he's, right. He's the guy, um, one of the best point guards we, we've seen, one of the best point guards this organization has ever had. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely. Um, without him, I don't know where we would be currently. Uh, we need him, whether people want to say that say or not. Say it on that. You know, that so foolishness. Definitely got to mention John Wall. Um, Gilbert Arenas is my favorite wizard ever to this day. Um he he made me excited to be a Wizards fan. Definitely did. He gave us hope. Um, some of the shots he hit, like in our barber shop, we still have uh, his, his game winner over uh, Chandler and Heinrich. That's still on the playoffs. Yeah, and it's just like man, I remember that shot. Like he hit it, waking up the next day for school, and I was like, yeah, we won. I'm like, I know it was going crazy. So <laughs> he, and people don't give him credit for when he was really good before the injuries. He was the third best shooting guard. He was. In the game it was Kobe, Wade, and Gilbert, and I, I got the my my favorite Wizards moment ever was being there when uh, Kobe came when the Lakers came in town and that four point play when Gilbert shook Kobe and then hit the three in his face when he like, dropped fifty on him no 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 when he dropped sixty that was in LA sixty right when he was here he did the four point play on Kobe and I was like yo I was there for that like mm-hmm. to see him like shake Kobe Kobe fouls him he drains oh. the three and then the free throw like to me that's my favorite Wizards moment like that I've personally witnessed so facts um. That's always good. And then my last player, because I mentioned four, uh, it's funny. I think I saw Wilson, you know, put some videos up. That Rod Strickland, man. Oh, yeah. Yo, Rod, Rod was the guy. Kyrie's godfather. Yeah, he he was the guy. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't get the credit he deserves, but a, a, lot of, a lot of good, like, early memories of basketball. Like, when I was watching Jordan with the Bulls, when they would play the Bullets, then mm. Rod would always the go bullets. go toe-to-toe and – and that was dope. So, yeah. Definitely. And do you want to chime in? Is this, is this better for you chime in, Wilson? Or nah, I told him he's a he's from DC. Honestly, I'm he really wants to do that. He, he, he doesn't want to deny it, but we're giving him his <laughs> his DC call. I man. mean, that's not fair since I don't root for any of the teams. It's not fair. A lot but, of people uh, don't. Cowboy you know fans. what? That is fair. I'm not on that <laughs> side of it. To make you feel better, I hate the whole division equally. So I don't so mean, that's, that's fine. Yeah. So at least I'm not like, hey. I'm, no, I'm not on the Dallas side. I, um, the I guess real quick with the Wizards, uh, Wes Unslid. Yeah, oh, Wes yeah. Unslid, definitely. He would be the uh, greatest Wizard, side, probably pretty much. Um, Got to give Phil some love. Oh, Shanir, um, yes, yes. After that, uh, you got to mention John. Just because, um, I mean, when he finishes up here, all the people talking crazy. I just don't lie. Um, you probably got to mention Gil. Somewhere mm-hmm. in there. Yeah, good. Before, before the stupidness. Um, he was he was the man. He's special. Um, and my last guy. I like that list. I'm probably gonna go with Chris Webber. Oh. Like he was kind of he was kind of a problem here. Yeah. Um. So I mean I go with that. It's probably not the greatest list. That's off the top of my head. Yeah, no, no, that's mm-hmm. fine. I didn't want to go historian. I'm like I want to do more historian with football because I, I breathe it more. But I could have went Elvin Hayes, you know. Yeah. Um. Definitely. So no, that's that's a good list. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else going on in sports? That that might be it. 
like in terms of what I wanted to talk about. That's that's it, really. You know, HTTR. Wait yeah, till the I Super can't. Bowl. <laughs> I I can't wait till football season. It's gonna be fun. And if Darius guys actually Geis, balls baby. how he how he is in the community, he's mm. gonna be a, a See, fan favorite for a DJ long Swear time. just said he's gonna be a top three rusher in the league this year. He thinks if he if he does that. Darius guys is gonna be a a, a man. You see like our O line. You see Trent Williams with AP. Yeah, no, I, the I, video he 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 beating him in and and sprints and like sprints I, and stuff. Nah, if guys if guys is the man on the field, mm -hmm. his legend here in DC only grows because yeah. that man's everywhere. Like he's he's in mm -hmm. the he's really embracing DC and for a rookie who doesn't really have a lot on him, like expectation wise, I haven't seen anyone like embrace the city yep. like him. And we're waiting for somebody to break out like an RG3 type of atmosphere. You see, this is a great city for great talent to come and be worshiped in a way. It's just you gotta you gotta stay but consistent. He he's seeing it where he sees the caps. He was there for that. And then you mm -hmm. see All Star Weekend. Like when you see it Bryce doing this thing you're like, like okay, now I know what it takes and if I can do my job I'm yeah, going to get I that love, love in this something. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely excited for that. But, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I know you got some special uh, things you want to mention, so I'm going to let you have the floor. Yeah, I just want I just want to give my condolences, you know, to the – you know, there was a 10-year-old young lady that was hit by a straight bullet yeah. a couple nights ago, you know, Micaiah Wilson. And, um, you know, that's just – I just want to mention, like, I'm pro prayers out to her family. You know, that's a sad situation. You know, then there was a seven-year-old young lady that was shot that just passed away in southwest Baltimore. She was also mm -hmm. hit by a straight bullet. Yeah, and we talked about today at work. That's just crazy. You know, Micaiah, her one of her little cousins, she's a student in my class. And just to see her, her, she she broke down. And that's just, just to see that, it just it just hurt me to the core. You know, she's a seven-year-old little girl. Just to see that, you know, we, yeah. we got to do better in our community as everybody and that goes by you know it really takes a, a a community to raise a child it takes a village to raise a child we have to get back to that you know we we my, my good man jimmy black he stated you know we're giving out too many passes you know people are still going on throughout their days going out you know making their money worrying about their money going to jobs man and uh and acting like nothing has happened you know the city he, he stated the city should be shut down you know the government should be shut down the things should be shut down until we get this these cowards under under police un just under something you know I'm, i don't even have any words to say it's just crazy you know yeah just to see i think what makes this one different is you saw a video like you video. know when you when, Four, when you hear hopping it out. is one thing but you just see dudes hopping out the suv and, and going in you're like really dog like mm -hmm. really and, and again you know me working in news like we, we play the right. same thing over so and over. So you see, get it. Like we, they had interviewed her um, last night at the little vigil, and yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's just sad, man. Mm -hmm. like, see that stuff. You no know, prayer, prayers to her, her they, whole these, family. These and the kids whole can't even go outside anymore and be kids. You know, they can't they can't do kid like things without your their parents worrying. And okay, is this going to happen? Is this going to happen? You know, and it starts in the in the household. We have to start holding each other accountable, holding these kids accountable. Man, I don't know. It just we just have to do better, and it starts with us as individuals. I always tell people, one child to me is is worth a million kids to me. You see that one child outside doing something he's not supposed to do, let them know. Pull your pants up, young man. Or you know, you can go this route. You can go this route. Go these different routes. Yeah. So we have to start doing more, not just building rec centers, but really community outreach. Really getting out, doing things. It don't matter what ward you in. It don't matter where you live. Southeast, Southwest, Northeast, Northwest. None of that matters. PG County, we all got to come together and do what we got to do. Absolutely. Yeah, and so. Anything else you want to add to the people out there? Yeah, I just want to give two shout outs. Shout out to my good man um, at Kamara Clothing. I have this shirt on right now. This is their No, no Love, Love Loss, Loss campaign right. shirts, you know. Um, it was, it began from, the, they had a friend that died, Alfred Kamara, isn't that, AKA Freddie B. So they have new things coming soon for the fall and winter. You can follow their Instagrams at Kamara Clothing. AKC, Skin Bone, and Gucci Rail. They are a brand that promotes peace and positivity. Peace and positivity. And I also want to shout out Manpower DC. I had the chance to attend. Yeah, we, uh, I saw that with, you know, Wale and, Wale. and, and um, Malik from Eat. You know, I, yep. I see you. I, Mr. I, I lurk on the timeline Got to. So Got I, I saw it. You That's know, a good look. It's a very good look. You know, we got to take 50 kids from Southeast down to the, the New Wharf for a stickball um, tournament. 
was responsible by New Balance. So that's Manpower DC, my good brother that I look up to, very good men. It's not a lot of times you get men that reach out to you and allow you to learn under them without ulterior motives. So shout out, shout out to my good brother, Jimmy Jenkins, because he, I, I salute him for all the things he going, he is doing. They have a DC versus Baltimore celebrity game, which is would be sponsored by Jimmy Black and Akil Carr. You know, two youngest brothers from the toughest sides of their cities. They're I've heard his name as well. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. be Akil doing. Carr. So yeah, yeah. look out for that manpower, DC. They they they're doing very big things. No, that that definitely that photo like that's Black Boy Joy at his finest in DC, and Which that's one? not something you see often. So to see you in that photo, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that's dope. I'm like, all right, that's Wale. Oh, that's mm-hmm. my man Malik. Oh, that's Damo. Like, all right, I see you. Empowerment at his finest. That's what we need more of. Not people that's looking for notoriety or doing things. Just want to give back to the kids. Yeah. Community. So, that's dope. Um, My quick shout-outs. Thousand Jumpers merch is coming soon. Uh, Definitely look out for that. We haven't dropped the episode in a while. We've been doing some things behind the scenes. But some stuff will be coming, will be unveiled real soon. So, look out for that. Mm -hmm. Um, Some nice merch. Um, Shout-out Snoop Dogg. uh, Yesterday. Uh, he had like the A and T shirt on. He was doing oh, his thing, so you, you already know. Like, <laughs> anyone who rep the rep the right school, you know they get love mm-hmm. on this on this on this show on any show I'm on. Facts. So salute Snoop, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Shout out to you know Jamal Haywood, <laughs> nine, 1950. You know, shout out to my good man. He's here with us today. We, yeah, shout out Wilson, us. man. You know, Wilson doesn't come around as much. Nope. You know, he's one of the busiest guys in D.C., so he and every time he can he can come and grace his way to the presence. It's always a a pleasure to talk and, and build bread, and, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, yes, man, that's what we do. I'm going to get him a Geist jersey very soon. <laughs> Stay tuned. Now, nah, we win the Super Bowl. I'll I totally get him a Geist jersey. We can put up for that. You'll wear it. No, he would. Like, it's a Geist jersey, yes. Yeah, guy, Geist is dope. Man, that's, that's why I carry his guys in high school, yes, that's, that's fine. Give me an Alex Smith jersey. Very good, man. Like, well, he. You would wear out of some jersey, you know. Good times with him. I'm gonna say good times. <laughs> there were times. There were times. <laughs> you respect what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> put a tough situation. Like, I don't remember that one good time, but it is what it is. You know, the like, division. Y'all have good time. Division. Y'all I hope so. No, we no, need no, them. No, no, definitely you will. I promise you guys have a good time. It's about the team. Like, y'all, no, y'all gonna have a good year. It's gonna be a fun year for y'all. Good. Yeah, we, we, we have, should be straight, I'm but not you know, this guy again. the exact opposite. I felt like the last couple years because I laughed. Every time you did excited. very a lot. Like a lot? A lot. You see, I'm not doing that right now, right? Right. So hopefully it's a it's a, it's a turn of the gavel. Every year. It was so cute. Yeah, since I've known you, you've kind of just because you know. Funny. Now I'm laughing at Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, he's. I don't know. We're and, not gonna get on that. And shout out Trav because he's gonna be covering every step of the way. So every step. Well, that with that being said, thank you guys for joining the Focus TV Mailbag. We'll be here each and every Thursday until otherwise. So until yep. the next time. Peace.